on this episode of Motoring Box, we're performing an upgrade which every single self-respecting XR6 turbo owner needs to do right now. Welcome back to Motoring Box, I'm Sean McKellar. This is my 2004 BA Falcon XR6 Turbo. And today we are performing a vital upgrade, which as I mentioned, every single XR6 Turbo owner should do to their engine if they haven't done it already. And it is actually what some of you would have suspected and you probably would have seen it in the title of the video anyway. We're going to be upgrading the oil feed line which runs to the turbocharger. So why would you need to go to all this trouble? Well, the problem with these Barra Turbo engines is, and I think it affects every single Barra Turbo from BA Falcon all the way through to FGX. And the problem with these engines is the stock standard oil feed line, which is a metal rigid line as opposed to a flexi one like this, especially where it connects to the block, there's this tiny little micron filter that it can actually become clogged with time. And when it clogs up, no oil is going to be flying through to your turbo, your turbo is going to die and you're going to be up for a couple of thousand dollars to replace it. So this little kit, which I bought about a year ago now from Golby's, uh, cost me about 170 bucks. To me, that is cheap insurance to know that my turbo is going to be getting enough oil when it needs it, which is pretty much all the time. <laughs> so it comes in two pieces. There's the uh, section which connects down to the connector on the block. This runs up around the front of the engine connects to the second part here which has the filter which mounts down the side here and then this part here connects to your turbocharger. So as part of this modification you need to actually pull the connector off the side of the block which has that tiny filter and you need to remove that filter so it's going to be no filtration at the start of the oil feed line but you do have this inline turbo smart oil filter. So that'll take care of your filtration and this is a replaceable item. You can order the part directly from TurboSmart or wherever you buy your parts from. And it, it is fairly easy to unscrew, drop it and uh, replace it. So uh, I think this will be a really cool upgrade. And as I mentioned, it's really just guaranteeing the life of your turbo basically. You don't want it to starve of oil because it'll overheat, all the bearings will basically melt, the whole thing will seize up and you'll be screwed. So let's get to it. Tell you what, it's starting to feel like every second day I have to pull the airbox out of this car. <laughs> We've done it so many times. As uh, frequent watchers would know, it's also made a little bit more difficult um, by the fact that this car does have a thicker radiator. So it's always fun. So whilst I'm pulling this out, I want to give a shout out to a mate of mine by the name of Ian Seabrook, because he lives over in Wales in the UK and he is actually imported an AU Fairmont, which is absolutely incredible. So uh, he's got a, a 2001 AU2 Fairmont, six cylinder, which he has imported to Wales. It took him uh, something like three or four months to, uh, from start to finish to get it over there, to get it road legal and all of that. But do check out his channel. I'll leave a link up in the corner of the video. So hopefully uh, I can actually complete this job today. The only thing I'm worried about is getting the oil pressure sender off, which is down the side of the block. Uh, and then getting the new oil feed line onto it and getting it sealed. I don't want any oil leaks. I think this end will be okay, but it's just that banjo fitting down on the oil pressure sender that I'm a little bit worried about. But we'll go on the journey together. Won't we? So I might get a work light because access down the bottom or down the side of the engine here is very cramped. You need to have nice skinny arms like I have. So yes, access is very tight. I might try and stick a GoPro down here. It's going to be very challenging to try and film this. It's even challenging to try and get a work light down here too. <laughs> it's crazy. Okay, that's the light. So we gotta push down on the top here. Try and get that, there we go. I have heard it is a 24 mil deep socket. So let's have a look here. Should just fit right over that connector. 
Oh, it's not a 24. Hopefully it's a 22 because that's the only other one I got. All my other ones are 19 mil and less. Okay. Jeez, even 22 feels just a little bit big. The next bolt is probably the 22 or the probably the 24 actually, but it's just that uh, pressure sensor. This 21 mil socket I have here from this other set does have like a little rubber piece on the inside, which is now on, on the outside, uh, because it is designed for pulling spark plugs. I've just flicked it out because I reckon maybe that could give us the extra little bit of depth we need to um, get that on there. Let's give that a shot. Oh, it fits. I've just successfully MacGyvered my way out of this tricky situation. Thank God for that. So let's see how we go here. My middle name should be MacGyver. Making do with crap tools. And that's another thing I should mention actually, like you can go out and buy all the tools in the world to make your job easier. But some of us are on limited budgets, me especially. And yeah, like it's easy. Just go out and buy this, go buy, buy that. But it is really surprising sometimes with a bit of ingenuity what you can actually get done with the tools you have in your garage. So here is our oil pressure sensor. Put it somewhere safe, like balanced on it. No, nah, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> and now the next part, I believe should be a 24 mil, if the internet is correct. Yeah, it feels like a 24 to me. I was just thinking as well, guys, uh, as I'm pulling this fitting off the side of the block here and seeing the oil seeping out, this is something I would never have tempted even just a year ago because I don't have a lot of confidence when it comes to working on cars. I'm not an expert, but having you guys watching my videos and supporting me and everything, it just gives me the confidence to try some things that I haven't done before. Because yeah, as I mentioned, I am only a beginner when it comes to working on cars, but you have to learn somewhere and you can only learn by just giving it a go and making mistakes from time to time. All right, so you can see the fitting here. I've got the oil pressure sensor off. I've got the next sort of part of it off. And all that's left is this banjo fitting for the hard line. There is a washer on each side. So we need to try and get this line off. I'm probably gonna have to unbolt it from the turbo next and then try and pull the other end of it off that fitting and then pull the whole line out of this engine. So yeah, let's uh, turn our attention to the turbo. So to get to the turbo, we're doing something else which I've done a thousand times before and that is pull these intake pipes off. It's Groundhog Day XR6 turbo style. So there's two hard lines here. The top one is the coolant feed to the turbo and then the bottom one is the oil feed. So it's got another banjo fitting. I uh, don't know what size that bolt is, but let's have a look. Now my apologies guys, the camera actually just screwed up. It didn't focus properly, but I actually pulled out a 17 mil bolt at the other end of this hard line. It's another banjo fitting. So yeah, 17 mil for the bolt. And then, uh, yeah, like I mentioned, there's a banjo fitting here. I think the new uh, aftermarket braided line does not have a banjo fitting on this end but uh, let's try and pull this line out now that it's loose and see how we go with it. So this is probably going to be a little bit tricky because this side is fine uh, as far as axis goes but uh, this end here it basically disappears down between all of these uh, parts of the engine under the intake manifold. So we're trying to get the banjo fitting off the end here. Now we just got to get it out of there. Actually, it's pretty easy, I think. There we go. Simple. So there's a look at your hard line. I have bent it a little bit. There you go. That's probably how it was. <laughs> uh, so you could reuse it if you wanted to. You could just bend it back into place. But uh, this is what you want to get rid of. So the filter for this line is actually not in this part. It's actually down in that sender or that connector or whatever you want to call it that goes into the block. So we've got to try and get that out right now. So this is the fitting we need to get off. Hopefully it's a 24 or a 22 mil socket. 
Okay, that's perfect. Luckily, they're not. None of these are done up terribly tight. I mean, they're tight, but you can get them off. Yeah, it's not the toughest job so far that I've ever done. Again, could be jinxing myself, but let's see how we go. Hopefully no oil comes out of this thing. A little bit, not too much. Okay, let's have a look at this. All right guys, so what we have here is the crux of the problem. This is the whole reason we are doing this job today. This is the little oil sender that bolts into the side of the block. That side goes into the block there. And then you'll see these tiny little holes around the perimeter here. That is where the banjo fitting fits over the top and then runs to the turbo. And inside um, this little fitting here, on, and basically behind all of these little holes, is a tiny little filter. And that thing can clog up with time uh, and basically starve your turbocharger of oil, which is not a good thing. So <sighs> we just got to get that filter out somehow. And uh, I might just have to try and bash this filter out because I can see like a tiny little circlip inside there, but I don't think I have any tool that can really get at those. I'll have a look at the one I got. But yeah, this, this thing's just way too big. So we have to try and bash that filter out somehow. So you're just gonna make sure you get absolutely every part of the old filter out. Still some extra bits in here as it turns out. Don't want any of that in there because um, it's going to get in the way of your oil flow, which is not what you want. Alrighty, so that's looking pretty good to go. It's nice and clear inside. Make sure you get every single last bit of that filter out because yeah, there is this kind of plastic outer casing and then this inner mesh. So uh, yeah, definitely get a work light, shine it down here, make sure you've got absolutely everything out of it, which I now have. So you guys won't be able to see this when I'm doing it, but here's an idea of what's going to happen. You can see on the top of the turbo here, there's the oil inlet. I have tried to clean it up as best I can. Then we've got this little fitting, which basically bolts down into the top of that. I'll put a bit of thread sealer on it if I don't lose it. Um, and then your line connects to that. So yeah, sorry guys, you won't be able to see much of this happening. We just got to get this little fitting down into the top of the turbo. Turns out if you've got a deep socket, it's going to be extremely helpful for this job. So that's what we're going to use. Let's see how that goes. Might have to uh, try and move the coolant overflow tank out of the way. Cool, I'll just try and sit him up there. Might have to zip tie him in place, otherwise it's gonna fall down. So yeah, terribly sorry you guys can't really see much of this. But I'm basically just trying to get this 90 degree elbow onto the top of this fitting. I think it's going to be very slow going. In fact, I might have to take that heat shield off as well. Unfortunately, a spanner is the only tool for the job here. Like you can't get a socket onto it. Even a ratcheting spanner is not really going to help you. So I don't know what sort of torque these things need before they are all sealed properly, but hopefully what I'm applying here right now is going to be good enough because it has to be. So what I'm going to do is essentially get this whole thing hooked up and then we're going to have to first of all confirm that there is oil coming through the line and then once I've confirmed that we're going to have to make sure there's no leaks. I reckon it's a fairly low chance that uh, we'll get this thing installed and then there won't be a single leak. I reckon there's definitely going to be some. But I'm going to try and put thread sealant on basically every single one of these connections to try and assist us with that. I like to be fairly liberal with the uh, application of it. As long as you keep it away from the, um, the parts that are actually 
going to have oil flowing through them. Uh, it should be right. So I'll get these all loosely in place and then right at the end I'll come back and uh, tighten them down. And it'll probably sit there like so. That looks pretty neat. So that's roughly where it's going to be sitting. Possibly, uh, yeah, look, it's not the neatest thing in the world, but this is really about function rather than form. You can get holders for these things. You can get, uh, they're about 150 bucks though, so, uh, which mount to the front of the engine and it holds the, uh, I think you need an aftermarket water line if you're gonna do that though as well. So we'll see, I'll try and think of a way that I can install this fairly neatly, but it's gonna sit something like that. And uh, of course, the first thing we need to do is get our little sender piece back in place. So this is all nice and clean. We're using the existing washer, um, but I think it should all be good. Uh, we just got to get this into the hole without dropping it. Cool. Jobs like this aren't a lot of fun, as it turns out. Ideally, we don't want this one to leak, so we need to make sure it's done up nice and tight. Tighten this thing so. That's pretty tight. So now we need to get our little banjo fitting. Which I probably should put on the end of the line before I feed it down there. So let me pull the line back out. Get our two little washers there as well, which go on either side. Because yeah, this needs to go on the end of that line. bit too much. Tell you what, that Permaseal stuff smells atrocious. So we may have to do a final tighten on that thing just when uh, we install it in just because I don't want to put a vice grips or anything on this and try and hold that end while I tighten that. And uh, it just has to have a washer on each side. Okay, so we got the first washer on. I just need to feed this line back down there again, like so. And we can get our fitting on here. I am surprised we are still going with this job. I was convinced something was going to go wrong, or well, I was going to not have the right tool for it, something like that. So this is compressing the banjo fitting. And then we have the oil pressure sender. Everything is reinstalled down here. I just need to tighten up this end of the line. So let's make sure these are all tight, except for one of them. I'll tell you why in a second. So what I'm actually going to do is take this one off because I want to make sure we've got oil flowing through this line. So what I'll do is I'll put that into a container. We'll pull the fuse on the fuel pump and then we'll crank this engine over a bit and hopefully we get some oil coming out of it. I couldn't actually angle this into a container, so I'm just going to angle it into this cloth. And we're just gonna crank the engine a couple of times until we see a little bit of oil coming out of there. So there was a little bit of fuel in the line and it cranked over, which isn't ideal. But there we go. Proof that there is oil running through this line. Even if it was slightly messy to prove it. The other good news is uh, so far I haven't spotted any leaks. So this is really the last fitting here which needs to be tightened. This one's tight, this one's tight. The banjo bolt on the other end is tight and the fitting here to the turbo itself is tight. So it's just this last one. So it looks like we're in the home stretch. Short of any oil leaks, we're pretty much done. We just need to cable tie this thing into place for now. I'll try and find a more permanent solution for mounting it. And if you saw the oil pressure coming out of that thing, that was nice and strong. 
There is a restrictor down on the turbo itself, which takes it down to, I think about one mil or something. So it controls the amount of flow that goes into the turbo itself. So we'll just stick a few of these on and then we can move the position around a little bit and then finally we'll tighten them all up. All right guys, so here is a final look at the installation. We've got the line coming off the turbo. It's following the water line along the side of the engine here. We've got our filter sitting just down the front side of the engine here. And then it follows the water line along the front and then disappears down. So yeah, we'll start this up and we're gonna be checking for oil leaks on the turbo. We're gonna be checking for them around the filter. And then finally, we're going to be checking for them down on the block where the banjo bolt connects it to that sender down there or whatever you call that thing. So yeah, it's really all about the oil leaks at this point in time. So fingers crossed, we don't have any. We'll run the engine for a couple of minutes and yeah, probably after say 50 or 100 Ks, I'll have to pull everything off, have a look at it again, make sure it's not leaking. And yeah, we should be good to go. Cool, let's give it a shot. No leaks on the turbo. Can't see anything coming out of the connections on the filter. If they do, it'll drop pretty much straight onto the belt, which wouldn't be ideal, but it would at least be obvious. And down on the sender, there is a little bit of oil from when I disconnected it, but I couldn't see any new oil dripping down. So I think we're good there as well. So our piping's in, our overflow reservoir was in. Now we just go to the airbox and then we should be done. So we're going to reinstall our airbox with the under headlight intake. Do click the card up in the top right corner of the video if you want to know more about that. I think the stock uh, intake setup with the airbox and the crossover and everything just looks really cool. I don't want to mess with it at all. People have got different opinions. I've got a lot of comments from people saying, why don't you just get rid of it and do like a turbo side intake so you can get all that induction noise and that is nice, but I just hate it how it looks. So yeah, a lot of people, there are some people out there who agree with my thinking. I'm getting a bit old now, so I sort of have very strong opinions about things. I've done all that sort of stuff before on previous cars. I had a, an R34 Skyline, I had a full pod filter for a while, really hectic. And then I put it in an airbox and tried to like uh, put insulation in the airbox and try and like get around the problem, but in the end, it probably would have been better if I just left the stock airbox in place and then put a performance panel filter, which this one has, has a BPR panel filter. It will be really cool though to see what sort of power this car develops later on. There are some compromises I've made in the name of looks, I guess, and originality. I reckon it's still going to be on the money uh, power-wise as to what I'm after, which is sort of around the high 200s, low 300 rear wheel kilowatt mark but I want the car to be on a pretty safe tune. I want it to be nice and reliable. So as I mentioned, if you've got a BA to FGX Falcon, I believe they all suffer from this problem. So they will benefit from an aftermarket oil feed line kit like this one. So if you're planning to keep your car long-term, you want to look after it, definitely get one of these lines installed. They are a couple of hundred bucks, uh, depending on which one you go for. But yeah, look, it's really guaranteeing the life of your turbo and hopefully giving you many more trouble-free kilometers in the years ahead. So thank you very much for watching guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Went fairly smoothly, I was pretty happy. Um, if you want to support the channel, please subscribe, please like the video if you got the kick out of this or if you learnt something. If you want to support the channel, you can also join up or also on Patreon as well. Links below. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time. Oh yeah.